so welcome back the next topic in our unit is shear and pressure gradients now we'll be seeing the relation between shear and pressure gradients what is shear gradient shear gradient is nothing the decrease or increase that is the change of shear stress in a particular direction is called shear gradient and the same way change in pressure with rest in a particular direction is called a pressure gradient now take a pipe the pipe consider a small element 3d element so that we'll now study the behavior of this element and derive the relation between these two gradients here this is the enlarged version of that particular element which we are talking about. see as said before the shear stress tau at wall is tau wall is maximum and tau at center is equals to zero that is if this is the pipe this is the profile of shear stress that is it will vary from maximum to zero at these points so this shear stress will be acting on the top and bottom faces whereas pressure will be acting on the side faces that is pressure will be in the horizontal direction and <coughs> shear stress will be acting on the vertical vertical faces this is the uh, sorry shear stress will be acting on the horizontal faces and pressure will be acting on the vertical faces so now since we have seen where the pressure forces and shear forces are now let's get into the derivation here the element which you consider the thickness the length the breadth they are all given in the diagram itself you can see so we will see the length is delta x L length is delta x with w is equals to delta z and thickness thickness is equals to delta y this is the uh, dimensions of the element that we have considered now since uh, there will be fluid moving through this element since we have considered this element there will be fluid more going inside and outside of this element first of all there will be relative motion relative motion is the motion in relation with another layer or another particle that we consider say for example if we consider center line there will be motion to the top and bottom in the pipe if we consider the center line there will be motion here and here also so since there is a relative motion because of which shear stress gets generated what happens when shear stress generated friction happens what will happen once friction happens velocity decreases that is when on layers where shear stress is higher the velocity will be low that is velocity is non-uniform velocity is non-uniform throughout the element now let us consider the layers given here what are the layers that are given that is a b c d here the downward one and a dash b dash c dash d dash on the top one. let's say there is a shear stress tau acting on the downward element tau here now what happens this layer will exert some sort of shear stress on the top layer also okay. this layer will exert shear stress on this one and there will be another layer over this on top of this also that will exert some shear stress so the mixture there will be tau plus dou t by dou y into dou y this is the shear stress acting on the face a dash b dash c dash and b dash and tau is the shear stress acting on a b c and d what happens now since there is a difference in the shear stress values here on the top layer and the bottom layer um, the net shear stress that is the net shear stress through the element net shear stress a small note while deriving the equation here 
I mentioned it as net shear stress, but it is actually net shear force because we are multiplying the area also. Sorry for that mishap that I caused here. For upcoming 10 to 15 seconds, whenever you see net shear stress, assume it as net shear force only. Net shear stress can be written as tau plus dou t by dou y into dou y dou x dou z minus tau dou x dou z. Minus tau dou x and dou z. This is the net shear stress acting on the element. So from this what we will get since tau dou y tau dou x dou z here this tau dou x dou z minus tau dou x dou z. So the final net shear stress net shear stress is equals to dou t by dou y dou x dou y dou z. This is the net shear stress through the fluid element which you consider. Now as said earlier shear stress causes decrease in the pressure which means the only way to compensate this shear stress value which we are getting through the fluid element is via decrease in the pressure value. What will be the pressure? The pressure will act only on this particular phase. This is A dash D dash A D and C dash B dash C and B. This will be in the horizontal direction that is pressure will act only on the horizontal direction. So pressure over this point will be P and here will be P plus dou P by dou x into dou x. Here we are considering in the horizontal direction that is why we are getting dou x. Here this is in the vertical direction that is why we are getting dou y. So now net pressure that is net pressure force is equals to P dou y dou z minus P plus dou P by dou x to dou x into dou y dou z. What will be the value? Minus dou P by dou x into dou x dou y dou See, you all may ask, sir, what is this dou x dou y dou z? We are not able to understand anything. So consider these as the length, breadth and depth of a particular element. Now let's say we are considering a 3D element. What is the 3D, 3D element here? Now we are dealing with shear stress and pressure. What are the units of shear stress and pressure? See, shear stress it is Newton per meter square and for pressure also it is Newton per meter square. So now we are trying to convert it into force. That is net shear force and net pressure force. So when we are considering force, what we'll do? We'll we'll multiply the stress value with the area. Now if this is P is here the pressure over this face, what is the area? Do y into dou z. See that is what we wrote here. P into dou y dou z. That is the pressure force on this side. Similarly, here if this is the pressure, this into dou y dou z is the pressure force at this point. That is why we are getting all this dou x dou y dou z. Just don't get confused and everything. Now, we have seen what is the net shear force and net pressure force. If, if the flow is two dimensional, that is 2D and there are no external forces acting then according to the principle of equilibrium net shear force should be equal to net pressure force why right? we already seen that as viscosity increases that is as shear stress increases pressure is the only one that will compensate for this shear stress. As shear stress increases, something has to 
decrease something has to push the liquid what pushes the liquid pressure force how pressure force pushes the liquid it decreases itself it loses certain energy and that's why it pushes the liquid forward so net shear stress shear force is equals to net pressure force now we will equate this what is net shear force dou t by dou y into x dou y dou z is equals to sorry del x del y del z and minus dou t by dou x into del x del y del z these three get cancelled what is the end result dou t by dou y is equals to my dou t by dou x what we are saying we are saying dou t by dou y is minus dou t by dou x that is the value here but what we will do is we will write dou t by dou y is equals to dou t by dou x on why we know that shear stress and pressure shear force and pressure force are inversely proportional that is as shear force increases pressure decreases so there is no need to add minus minus means it is in the decreasing direction this means this is the decreasing direction this is when dealing with magnitude but here the concept is more important that is why we will be dealing with shears as shear force increases pressure decreases so change in the shear stress gradient along the y direction is equals to change that is the pressure gradient in the x direction that is shear stress gradient in y direction is equals to pressure gradient in x direction this is the relation between these two values another relation that we can get from here is we know uh, what is the value of tau what is tau tau is equals to mu dou v by dou y substitute this value here that is dou dou by dou y of mu dou v by dou y it is equals to mu into dou square v by dou y square so now mu into dou square v by dou y square is equals to dou p by dou x this is another way of writing the relation between shear and pressure gradient see in this relation we have dou t by dou y and the rest dou p by dou x which means there is change for shear force only in y direction shear forces change only in y direction whereas pressure forces they change only in x direction that is whether whether or not you are considering a point at certain place in x direction consider here 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 wherever you select the shear stress will not change just because of the horizontal direction only change will happen when you move in this direction or in this direction when you move in this direction shear stress won't change similarly for pressure force when you move in this direction only there will be change in pressure in this direction in this direction no change in pressure that is shear force shear force independent of x direction plus pressure force independent of y direction so with this we've come to an end to the first topic in this unit that is the characteristics of laminar flow the next topic will be an important one that is hagen poiseuille equation that concept is very very important make sure you listen to that very carefully